Good morning, guys. I hope we're all sparkly. Today, we're going to talk about peaks and troughs. Troughs. What's the difference between being on testosterone and being natty? Well, why do we measure levels in the morning when you're natty? Because that's when your levels are at the highest. But I want to know when they're at the lowest. No, you actually do want to measure your levels when they're at the highest. And that is early morning. Because your anabolic processes predominate over nighttime. There is a diurnal variation of testosterone that goes on throughout the day. Typically about 30%. And its major influence or contributory factors to lowering levels are food and exercise. So when you're trying to establish a diagnosis of testosterone deficiency, what you're really trying to do is see how effective the hypopituitary gonadal axis is. So you measure early morning. When you're on testosterone replacement therapy, you measure in a trough. Trough. Why? It's basic pharmacokinetics. As with every medication, you want to know the minimum effective level to achieve the desired outcome. Therapeutic levels. That's why you measure in a trough, not in a peak. We are trying to resolve negative symptoms and we are trying to mimic and not distort physiology. Now, by the very nature of injecting a hormone or taking a medication, irrespective of how stable your levels are, there will be a slight peak and trough. trough. So, we subscribe to daily microdosing of testosterone, cypionate and HCG because you can achieve stable levels with this protocol in 99.9% .9 of people. The people that don't get stable on this tend to have incredibly low SHBG. So we have had success from weekly microdosing of testosterone on Decadate, which has a longer carbon chain. So it's metabolized slower. Peaks and troughs. <laughs> Toxicity. Let's clear that up because that's garbage. If you want to measure toxic levels of a drug, you want to measure them when you think the drug level is toxic. As already stated, you have peaks and troughs. troughs. So if you want to see how high the drug level is going, which can cause negative symptoms, you want to measure serial drug levels, which is why obviously you measure serial drug levels. So toxicity in testosterone replacement therapy, is it possible? It's not really toxic, is it? But you can have super physiological levels. Now that can manifest in neuroendocrine dysregulation you can have symptoms of narcissistic personality disorder. Oh, you can have a rise in hematocrit as a result of excess erythropoiesis. You can have a rise in blood pressure. You can, you can, you can have a dysregulation of your lipid profile. So again, we talk about balance 24 seven. So we have HDL that takes cholesterol away from the cells and LDL that takes cholesterol to the cells. Now you need both. Cholesterol is the precursor to pregnenolone that cascades down eventually to aldosterone, testosterone and cortisol. So you want a nice balance. You do need LDL to take cholesterol to the tissues, but you don't want to keep it there. You want to take away some cholesterol through HDL. So balance, baby. <sighs> Peaks and troughs. <laughs> oh, listen, I could have a fancy background. I could speak with confidence. 
and assure you through confidence that my opinion is fact. But let's just have some common sense and speak proper English.